Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex and this is the Ramble and we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry Bubbles Brown. And uh, um, last night I think I was saying your name, I said Bubbles and Marjorie said, who's Bubba? You know, Bubba. Or, or who's, uh, there was another thing she thought I said. And I said, no, Bubbles. She says, is that his real name? And I went, no. <laughs> I went, that's his uh, his given name from uh, uh, Paula Poundstone, Paula right? Paula Poundstone, 1982. Yeah. And it's because you like to go to get to, to like, hot tubs? Was trying it? to get her and another guy, a woman at the Holy City to go to a hot tub and... Uh, so she started calling me Bubbles, and then people realized it was kind of funny because I'm so unbubbly as a person, so it stuck. Did they? Uh, did they actually? Can I ask you? Did they go to the the hot tub? We did. We did not. No, but uh, I you, think they. I think they were leading me on. That I think they were enjoying teasing me. That was the. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Do you, have you? You enjoyed hot tubs, right? Uh, no, I oh. too many too many germs. Oh, it's so you're trying to get people to go to a hot tub, and yet you don't well, like people hot tubs. People kept telling me about it. there was a hot, big hot tub place on Van Ness and Broadway, and that was where people were going. And then, and then, then I realized, oh my God, there's the whole public's been in these tubs. They got to be disgusting. Yeah, no, I always felt that too. You know, I had somebody take me to one once. Uh, she went to they were little private hot tubs. They were they had like ten of them in this place. And uh, you could then go into the hot tub and, I guess, take your clothes off and whatever. So yeah. So she thought that would be a sexy idea. And it was, actually, because she also gave me ecstasy. And so we uh, we screwed like, uh, like uh, rabbits. <laughs> I don't know how rabbits screw, but we assume rabbits are very uh, exciting when they have sex. So, But it was good. It was great. You know, but that, that's the only time I would do it. And I still felt like I had to go home and take a shower. Oh, yeah, I would think so. You know, because well, who knows who's been in that hot tub? I mean, I know they're probably cleanly. It, they, cleanliness is a big deal. They're cleanly? Well, where did they come up with that? <laughs> cleanly. <laughs> they're cleanly. Yeah. I don't think you could get enough chlorine in there to make it safe. <laughs> <laughs> and then you die from the chlorine. Chlorine point, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so you, that, that was that they gave you the name Bubbles that night, and mm-hmm. did it stick because they kept calling you Bubbles, or did you decide hey, it, that's not it, bad? No, I didn't like it, but it stuck for some reason, and I couldn't shake it. And now you're pretty well known as Bubs. I guess, yeah, yeah. yeah whenever anybody speaks about you, oh, and I saw Bubbles, I saw Bubbles yesterday, or I saw Bubs. That's <laughs> the other. Like I, uh, here, I have to uh, name the file where our. That was my second nickname in life in uh, sixth grade. That the teacher stuck called me Sleepy because I always looked like I was ready to fall asleep. So Sleepy. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, that would that would fit actually. Yeah. But Larry Sleepy Brown doesn't really doesn't work as well as Bubbles. No. And now. Whenever you do a show or anything anywhere, your build is Larry Bubbles Brown, right? They still do, yeah. And the bubbles is supposed to be in quotes. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. My uh, favorite nickname for a comic was uh, Jeremy Kramer, Mandingo. Jeremy Mandingo. Mandingo. I remember we called him Mandingo. Mandingo, which was a, 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 movie, a horrible movie I never saw from the 70s, I guess. It was a terrible movie. One, it, it's a wonderfully terrible movie. In other words, it's the kind of terrible movie you can watch. Yeah, you know? like Ed Wood movies. <laughs> well, bet, uh, different than Ed Wood because Ed Wood had no money. Okay, 
So he had to do his films on the cheap. So really, you have to say that his films were masterpieces because he managed to do a lot with no money. Yeah, they were entertaining. I watched the beginning of Plan 9 from Outer Space, and they go into a, uh, <laughs> they, they go into a crypt, okay? And it's made out of cardboard. You know, and they have to duck to get out the door, to, you know. So it, 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 Ed Wood had no money to work with, but in this case, this was, uh, I think, Dino De Laurentiis produced the picture. Really? And there was a lot of money put into it, a lot of big actors in it. I think James Mason was in it, if I remember correctly. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's the worst movie any of these people made. Uh, but it is uh, at the end they take the mandingo and they boil him in in water or something or oil I can't remember what and it's James, just it's James the, Mason that seems like oh well, he must have been the slave owner but they also got this English actress to play a Southern belle and so they kind of taught her how to speak Southern dialect which is easy really for. British people because it's close it's kind of close to British accent and she throughout the film tells people about the Mandingo I was ripe you were ripe <laughs> I was ripe uh, it's a wonderful movie if you ever get a chance to see it you must Maybe see, I'll it. see it yeah. oh wow. it is it is it is laugh filled okay there is nothing worse uh, so, congratulations. You're going to see a good movie. So, uh, how how's the wonderful world of uh, non-dial-up going for you? Non-dial-up? <laughs> uh, yeah, not, not great. I did uh, one test with the uh, Zoom thing. It was a debacle, so I'm going to... Going to try another one this weekend. Well, once you uh, get it on, did somebody come and teach you Zoom? Uh, someone, uh, we just did it over the, uh, over the phone and the internet. And it, Zoom is simple. It's really simple. You know, like I have a Zoom address here, and all you have to do is have an invite to that address. And then you just click on the thing, and it, uh, it connects you with me. That's it. Simple. Okay. Plain and simple. Uh, and we should, we should try it maybe next time when we do this, because now that you've got dial-up, and you've got Zoom, which do you have Zoom on your main computer or on the uh, portable? Uh, it's not on the. I don't think it's on this. Uh, we were doing it with the portable. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, uh, we can. Uh, you know, it, it's very, very simple. Very simple. I could send you a link to me, and then you click on that link, and you're there. You know, I just have to accept you on this side. And we're we're talking with each other. So what was the where where did you run into a problem? Oh, just getting the thing started, and then it would uh, disconnect, and it was just it wasn't good. It would disconnect. Yeah, I just then I could uh, I could see him. I don't know if he could see me. So if you know. could see him, he could see you. You know. Oh well, we'll uh, we'll maybe I'll call you and we'll just try it. You know, and the sound the sound. We're gonna, we already had another one planned for this week. I'll try it this weekend again, but it was. Yeah, yeah. Well, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a real problem for you. Okay. You know, and if you want it to be a problem, you see, half the problem is that you perceive it's a problem, right? And so you have a defeatist attitude from the very beginning. And that I think be my nickname, the de defeatist. I like that. Well, no, it's the fear. It's the fear of computers that you can't do it. And the fact is, the computers are kind of simple. You know, uh, they have a master. You have a mastery over them rather than having a mastery over you. Okay, so knock it off. All right. Uh, Jeez. Till AI eats us all up. AI. I hate the whole AI thing. You know, artificial intelligence has been around for quite a while. And all of a sudden, somebody turns up a program that will write a commercial, like if I say to the AI program, write a commercial for, uh, um, oh, I don't know, 
Alex Bennett. And then we'll write a commercial for Alex Bennett. Yeah, I have a, I've had to do that in half the time, but I have to go back and correct uh, um, things that were wrong about me, you know. So, uh, <laughs> but it, 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 you know, AI is has uh, been around for quite a while, uh, and it was just because somebody came out with a program called Chat GBT, I think it's called, <clears throat> and you could write commercials with it, or you could write a script with it, or you could write a book with it. Um, and it, all the, all the um, AI does is it goes out on the internet and looks for facts and figures and stuff that will be used in what it's trying to write, and it does it pretty fast. Uh, but AI itself has been around for a long time. Every time you get a robocall, that's AI, you know? And AI is... Uh, I imagine there's a day where the computer could take over the world. I, you know, I'll, I'll still allow people that science fiction fun thing, you know. But uh, I, I just don't. Uh, I'm, I'm not bothered by AI. And but everybody, oh, AI is gonna, it's gonna ruin the movie business. It's gonna ruin the, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's gonna. Uh, and then, then they say. Well, you know, they can take like an actor, and instead of using the actor, they can use AI. Well, they're already doing that, and the actors are approving of it because they're in the movie, and they want to do something where uh, that's kind of impossible, and they use the they use a AI rendition of the actor. Mm -hmm. Well, so you know, if the actor approves, okay. If the actor doesn't approve or doesn't get paid for the use of his image in AI, well, that's another. That's another question, you know. So anyway, and you got the you got the you got the uh, actors' strike, um, which uh, I just talked to someone that was in active in SAG, and he's really upset that they haven't settled it yet. And, uh, they're very, you know, they just reelected Fran Drescher. Fran Drescher, I think he was blaming her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I blame her for a lot. I blame her for me not having in, uh, health insurance anymore. You know, she was one of the people behind getting rid of. Uh, of oh, really? Yes, and so uh, all the seniors in uh, in in SAG, unless they're making movies right now and have a, make a lot of money, and I guess who would that be? That would be. Uh, oh, I don't know. Um, Tom Cruise. No, Tom Cruise isn't that old yet. He's not a senior. Yet, so. He's not a senior yet. But oh, I mean, they don't hire old people. We forgot. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's the old people that got hit with this, and and now, yeah, yeah, and now they don't have insurance. They have to go out and find it's supplemental insurance to their Medicare, and that was all Fran Drescher, you know. And really? I don't, I didn't know that. I, I don't know how she got reelected. To be honest with you, I really don't. Uh, but I guess it's in the middle of a strike, and everybody felt, why change horses in midstream? Uh, but, I mean, God, I hate her. I just hate her. And the reason some of the people in the union hate her is because this strike's been going on for, what, seven months, something like that? At least five, yeah. Yeah, I think it's close to seven. And, uh, it, you know, they, they say they had a, they had a deal with the, with the producers and everything. And then she went back to the table and said, no, we want this too. And they walked out. They said, we made a deal with you and you're not sticking to it. And she just got, I guess she got gutsy because she got reelected. No. Oh. You know, and, and I mean, come on. They're, you know, I don't, I don't worry about the people like Tom Cruise. I don't worry about the people like George Clooney. And, uh, in fact, George Clooney said, why not... Uh, if you want to make up money for the uh, for the uh, union, why don't you just stop having a cap on union dues? Because there's a cap on union dues of a million dollars, okay? And if you make over a million, you don't pay any more dues based on that million, all right? Make based on more than a million. Uh, and he said, let's do away with that so all of us have to pay Continually, so there's no cap. He said that'll bring you in about 128 million dollars or something like that. And a whole bunch of people were with him, big movie stars. He said, "Yeah, I can do it. You know, why not? Let's just do it." You know. 
And she wouldn't do it. She said, hey, oh, that's impractical. You know. Wow. So here you've got a bunch of people, for instance, Th Tom Cruise, uh, uh, for example, or George Clooney, for example, are not people that really need to be working right now. You know? I mean, uh, it's just a big vacation for them because they have a lot of money. They're rich. Right. They're wealthy. But think about the average union worker in SAG, and this is a SAG strike. This is not a SAG after a strike. Uh, think of those people who get occasional work and rely on that for, for the health insurance if they make $25,000 in the year. Uh, and and they, by the way, only, what did I hear? Something like only like, Eight percent of the union members are actually working, you know, or make enough I, money. I heard it was more like four percent. Really? Yeah. Anyway, it's those people who are being hurt by this strike because they can't work, you know. And they figured, oh, you could do a strike, you do it for three uh, for a month or so, and then the movie people will want to, you know, buckle under. Here we are at what you you said five months. I think it's uh, seven months, and it's it's ridiculous. You know, these are the people who are really being hurt by this strike, and uh, she's just playing games. You know, so uh, I agree with your friend who said, you know, Fran Drescher is the worst. She's terrible, just terrible. Huh. Yeah. And my union just combined, you know, a couple of years ago with, with a, a SAG. And the only thing benefit I got from SAG was it w was screeners at the end of the year, movies I never saw, you know, because they had the, the SAG uh, awards. And so you get to watch, you get all these movies, you go online. It used to be they used to send you screeners, and now they don't anymore. They, they just give you a thing so you can go online and you can see these movies online. So, and we're coming up on that, but or are we? I think I don't know. Who knows when the SAG awards are going to be this year? But anyway, so you know, I mean, that's the only advantage I've gotten out of SAG after. Outside of that, no advantage at all. Plus the fact they really think about SAG more than they think about after. Like, this isn't an after a strike. It's a SAG strike. What are they going to do when the contracts for sa for after come up? Are they going to do the same kind of strike? I don't think so. I don't think they're going to have the same kind of of, of uh, feeling if they need to do it. You know, so it's 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 SAG after, but it's SAG after. You know. Well, SAG always kind of looked down on after before the United, didn't they? It was like... They remember they tried to get them to join together for a hundred years. <laughs> well, the reason why they joined, and it's not a bad idea, is you know most of the people who are in movies are also will do some television, and uh, uh, they were two separate unions. Now they're the same union, so it it, it did help with say bookkeeping. You know, we were unions that had certain links, uh, uh, but but you may notice that during the strike. The strike is still on, right? But all the late night shows are back on because those guys are after it. They're after it, and and they, and after it isn't on strike. We probably will be eventually, but uh, you know, so it, it really has turned into a, a real debacle, you know. Yeah, they moved the. It used to be you could re get uh, health benefits if you made ten thousand in a year, and I think they bump that up now you got to make 30,000 I think it's 25 I think okay. somewhere around 25 yeah but it was definitely went a lot up higher well I mean it's ridiculous I mean uh, I, I was a union member what happened what I got <clears throat> and I had never gotten uh, health from them because I never made enough under after uh, my main work under after was when I was first here in New York WMCA WPLJ they were both after stations, and I, I got enough to take care of my insurance, but I was insured, I think, under ABC at that time uh, and under WMCA's medical program. I don't even remember having medical insurance, you know. It didn't matter to me. If I had it, I had it. I just 
never used it because I never got sick. Who gets sick at like 25, you know? So um, I never, I never needed it. And it was, it was, a ter- it was uh, just, you know, um, an afterthought for me. But as I got older, I started needing health insurance, and it was nice that I could get health insurance from, I, I never was able to get it from after it because I never worked, when I worked in San Francisco, that wasn't an after station, so I didn't get paid under after, and therefore I didn't get any, any benefits from AFTRA. Um, so, you know, um, I after I left New York, I never really worked that much under AFTRA unless I maybe did a commercial or something like that. And uh, so I never built up enough each year to be able to have insurance. Well, when I got to be, I don't know, I think it was six, uh, uh, 70, I got a thing from the union saying, you know, you're a senior and you have the right to insurance by from the union. And it only costs you $2,000 a year for you and your wife. And if I had children, it would cover the children as well for $2,000 a year. Pretty good deal. This was nice, yeah. Well, it was uh, Medicare supplemental, okay? But it was great and had a great you know, d- dental policy. And how most dental policies give you $1,500 a year, okay? And that's it. They, theirs was twenty five hundred. You know, it was a great plan, and it was for seniors. I couldn't believe it when I got it. I said, well, "What? What's the hitch here?" And they said, yeah. "There's no hitch. You know, you're covered. You know, there's some copays and things like that that are involved, but outside of that, you're covered." Well, we were covered until after suddenly decided they weren't going to cover us anymore. And I started to think about all the old actors and actresses who were still alive, like Olivia de Havilland at 103, who suddenly didn't have health insurance anymore. Uh, you know, so it, 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 it was just terrible what they did to us. They, they, and, and we sued, and we won. Uh, Ed Asner filed a suit against the union, and we won. And you know what we're getting? Five four hundred dollars a piece. Try buying supplemental insurance every year for four hundred dollars. You know, it's so it's, more like four hundred a month. I I would have never settled for that. You know, the union shed had to have paid through the their the blood in their veins. You know, so. that that's my story. I'm sorry I took up so much time. So much of your too. Well, surprising that San Francisco used to be a pretty big union town. I'm surprised all the radio stations weren't after. Well, it, uh, for instance, at uh, Live 105 where I was, uh, there there was a union vote taken there, and the union didn't get voted in. So legitimately, I as an after a member could work that station because they legitimately had tried to go union. And the people at the station didn't vote it in, so I wasn't I wasn't scabbing at all, you know. Um, and uh, a lot of stations in San Francisco, they took the vote and they didn't bring in the union, which I thought was stupid. I think that you know, you how, know how do you vote against making more money and better well, the, working they, conditions? Because they go, oh, well, we'll have to pay dues. You know, well, you know, of course you're going to have to pay dues, but you're going to get something for those dues. Get back, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So I mean, I've always been a very strong union guy because my father was in the musicians' union. And he always talked about how great unions were, and that you should never walk across a picket line, and you should honor a strike when somebody is having it. And uh, so when when it came to uh, when it came to uh, after. Uh, I I was all for you know having a union, but they voted they before I even got there they had voted it out. Mm-hmm. So, but I joined the I I was a signatory to the union uh, as a company uh, because I believed in the union that much, and I always renewed my my dues every 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 six months or every year or whatever whenever it was. 
because I believed in being in the union, even though the union hardly represented me ever. Okay? And, uh, but I, I had my company be a signatory to the union. So if anybody worked for me, I had to pay them union wages. And I didn't mind doing that, you know. But they screwed me over on that one, and that's a whole other story, which we don't have time for right now, because it's almost time to say goodbye to the lovely Larry Bubbles Brown has heard me. Brown, who can't shake his nickname. Can't, <laughs> can't shake. Well, I can't. Uh, I'm, uh, I've shaked my, shook mine. My, my nickname when I was a kid was Bolo. So, oh, right. Bolo. But we'll get into that in another time. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Larry Bubbles Brown, the man who no longer has dial-up. Yay! See you later, Larry. Bye-bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, thank you, Larry. Thank you, Bubs. Thank you, uh, Bolo. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, nice to have you here. Uh, let's. Uh, uh, we we. Uh, I don't know why I have nothing to talk about. I'm just. I'm just so out of it lately. I don't know why I'm tired all the time. Oh well, just my life. Okay, and that's the way I live it. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Let's uh, let's go over to um, these people who are waiting here. Let me see, I'll admit all, and we'll see how many of them pop up immediately here. There we go, there we go, there we go, okay. And uh, there should be one, one left, Jeff Stein. And uh, Jeff is connecting his, to audio. Are you there, Jeff? No, Jeff, uh, uh, Jeff, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Okay. You're, you're fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. There we go. Oh, oh, wait, wait, no, no. Now you've, now you've brought up your, uh, your, oh, no, no. Jeff Stein. And Jeff go. is connecting I, his. I tell you, I'm, I'm. You just got to close down your YouTube browser. I think I'm okay now. Yeah, he's okay. All right. Okay. He's fine. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good, good, evening, good evening to Josh, and good evening to Charlie, and good evening to Jeff, and good evening to any of you who might have a tendency to call uh, here in a, in a few moments. Uh, we don't know who or when. But anyway, so um, what's happening in the world today that I should know? Oh, they, they caught, found the guy who uh, did those oh, mur murders oh. up in Maine. Yeah, they caught him. Well, they didn't catch him. He was dead. He committed suicide. Wow, that's what Damn, I we didn't get him fast enough, right? <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, he saved us a lot of money for the trial. Yeah, yeah, uh, but it's also this has been going. Well, they he cost the state a lot of money and cops trying to find him. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. So. Yeah, a bunch of kids got killed too. Yeah, you know, it was horrible. It was just horrible. You know, yeah. but. Hey, uh, you know, as long as you don't want to legalize guns, you know, it's going to keep happening, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's amazing that, that we, we don't do something about it, that we just simply allow them to proliferate. And here, of course, is a guy who will defend gun ownership. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he'd defend this guy. No, uh -huh. definitely not. Well, no, but, you know, I mean, this is going to keep happening as long as guns are allowed to proliferate. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't care what anybody says. It's the easy access to, to weapons that causes these problems to happen. And I'm sure some, as a responsible gun owner, you don't believe it should be that easy to do. But No. Yeah. No. They said, I, I love how the newspaper always says, he bought the weapon legally. What difference does it make? <laughs> what difference yeah. does it make? He's just he's just murdered 20 people. But well, can you defend? Can you because you know, I'm sure you you probably remember remember of uh the NRA at one time, right? Yeah. Are you still a member? <clears throat> no. No. I was a member for a year mm -hmm. and they kept sending me in the mail all the Republican propaganda. I told them to stop. They said they wouldn't. I said, "Fine, I won't renew." <clears throat> okay. They they sent me a ball cap like this. I threw it away. Yeah, well, apparently you didn't throw that one away. 
No, well, this one I found somewhere. What's it? What does it say? You have. You have the right to remain silent. Oh, okay. All right. Good. I got extras if you want me to send you one. No, 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 no. Because if I wear it, then nobody will talk on this show. Mm -hmm. Oh. You know. But thank you for offering. Welcome. Tomorrow I'm going to take a walk, and I think I'm going to have to use your cane. Your cane. Well, the cane you sent me. That's right. If you fall, I'm going to send you a walker. So don't. I don't want to hear that you fell. <laughs> well, you know, it's just like it, it's just. And I've got this again. This cat's trying to kill me. She doesn't That's think so. Name the cat killer. You yeah, call a killer. Yeah. It's a solution to that. Yeah, her name is Berta, but we'll name her <laughs> Killer Killer Berta. Yeah, yeah. Put her on vacation. No, That's it's right. just she keeps trying to trip me. Oh. You know, and I'm not. You know, I'm so worried about myself because maybe I'll fall and I'll break my fall with my hands or whatever. But I'm afraid of squashing her. You know, and that's and that. I don't want people to come home and get their cat and it's dead. You know, it's just not, it doesn't make a good relationship with your friends. You killed my cat. You fell on him. Well, I'm sorry. I couldn't. I, I, I wonder if the cat is ageist. I mean, we'll find out this weekend because Jeff's going to be down there, right? Yes. So if it tries right. to trip Jeff, then you'll know that it doesn't like older well, people. Well, well just, Jeff won't be able to see the cat because the oh. minute they show up, the cat's under the bed. Okay, you know. Uh, although today this cat was this cat won't come up on our bed, but we went into the we were looking for the cat. We play like where's Waldo? We play where's Berta, right? And and I've I pretty well figured out every place in this apartment that she finds to hide, which is excessive because there are a lot of hiding places in a, you know, in a, in an apartment this large. Mm -hmm. uh, so I start, look, I figure I'm going to go looking for her, and I walk into the guest room, and she's on top of the bed. She won't even get on top of our bed in the, in the get, in our room, but in the guest room, she's on top of the bed, and she's staying there, and she's sleeping there, and occasionally when we walk in and look at her, she picks up and looks at us, and then goes back to sleep again. And I can't then use the TV set in that room because I don't want to sleep on the bed and scare the cat away. Well, the cat thinks that's her bed. I yeah. think she thinks that's her bed, yeah. Turn, tune, the, tune the station into Fox News and see how long she stays there. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. But anyway, so. That's the, uh, the, the, the story of my, of my life mm. and uh, the cat that I'm being having to live with now you know I, lo I love the cat she's she's sweet I think there are days she's a real cunt okay um because there's um certain days she loves everything about us oh I love you I love you I love you and then the next day it's like most of the day mm. you know and then she decides to lie on the bed but Hey, we don't dare wake her up, you know. So, anyway, I wish I wish I had the door open and the cat would come in and I could show you the cat. But you know, uh, there's there. Uh, then I have to move the camera. Oh, it's too much trouble. I'm, I'm sorry, you know. Plus, you didn't come on this show to see cats, did you? No, uh, not really. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have charged charged you Broadway prices. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so uh, Josh, what do you think is the big important news item of the week? Hmm, of the week. Well, I mean, of course, everyone they will cover the shooting issue uh, or incident, which is terribly important. But I just don't, I don't sit and watch constant news coverage of them because it doesn't change much and it's fleeting. I mean, it'll be forgotten by. Sunday night uh, yeah, and you know nothing really will become of it and I'm not saying that to be funny or rude but I, I mean what's happened to this those those people in that town is you know terrible but uh, and I'm ready to do whatever anybody wants to do basically but you know no one's going to come get me and ask well, me wasn't there, the, wasn't there a shooting earlier this year in a bowling alley or something in Buffalo uh, 
Uh, was it a bowling alley? Grocery store. Grocery store. Grocery, grocery store. store. Probably, that was it. Yeah. Grocery store. See how soon you forget? Yeah. Well, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, the and it's it's not, you know, because Americans don't care. It's because the politicians haven't begun to care yet. Because enough Americans haven't pushed them to. So, I mean, that's a story, but it I, it won't have you know, lasting effect. Uh, I mean, I think the election of the new Speaker of the House will have more effect. Oh, you yeah. Know, well, because that's an, o- that's an ongoing crime. You know, to our daily lives than that will. And I'll, and I'll be honest with you, the really what the biggest story is that's not really going to be a story is the economic numbers and the, the outrageous growth of the GDP, which was record-setting. And yeah. But, but Biden's know, doing such a terrible a, job. Yeah, right. But if yeah, you put right. a random person up right now, uh, and you said, um, you know, are you in a good spot financially? They would probably say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, what do you think about the economy? Oh well, it's terrible. Mm-hmm. It's it's just it's awful. It's just terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I don't know what we're gonna do. Uh, you know, I mean, so. Okay. I think that's a story. You know, I think that the economic numbers mm-hmm. were very positive, yeah. but they're not getting any real play. Especially well, I think it, that's up, that's up to the Democrats to get that word out there and to push well, it out there and to make a big deal out of it. You, you know, know. I, I will say that I support him and, and everything, but one of the things that I heard this morning um, on my way to work on Morning Joe, for example, was the fact that Joe Scarborough pointed out that in a way, he wants to blame Joe Biden for this, and I agree because he just said if Donald Trump had had these numbers, he would be he would be saying it fifty times a day. Yeah. He would be tweeting yeah. "best economy ever, best economy ever," and then uh, he would walk down the hallway and pass a reporter, and he would run his mouth about "best economy ever." And then later that day, before he left to go to an event, he'd stand in front of the helicopter and he'd say "best economy ever, best economy ever," and then he'd make sure he said enough controversial stuff. That they played the clip, yeah. But I mean, I, I think Biden and a lot of Democrats think that it's indignant to take credit, you know. So he's, but it's to his own peril at this at this time. He does mm-hmm. need to get out there and say, you know, largest growth in GDP and largest economic growth, and you know. Well, what well, they, what they should do is they should start. You know, the, the mm. people only believe what they hear, yeah. and and the way you t- teach people that the, the the economy is great. Okay, don't just say it's up; it, it's great. All right, yeah. is you say it over and over and over yeah. again to a yeah. point where nobody you know uh, forgets it. You know, um, uh, and and yeah, I mean, it, I I drove home the other day, two or three mm-hmm. days ago from work. And I drove by a gas station where gas here was uh, below three dollars a gallon. It was like two ninety six, and I laughed to myself. I said, "I bet that's Joe Biden's fault too." <laughs> yeah, I mean, I the thing is that, that been in the, the, five per, years. the perception is the economy is terrible. Right. Okay, but that's mm-hmm. a wrong perception, and yep. it's wrong because the Democrats haven't corrected it. They've uh, allowed the Republicans to stake that claim. That they, that they, you know, that everything's terrible. I mean, things are uh, uh, don't cost what they were. Li- they're a little better now. All of that stuff is better. Yeah. I mean, mm. no, I agree. Look, I thought to myself this morning that Democrats are the only real party that is able to govern, but Republicans are the only real party that's able to convince anyone that yeah. they are able to govern. Yeah. <laughs> But they are really. I mean, that, that's the way I see it. They are impossible to re, to govern in yeah. truth, you know. Right. I mean. Um, but, but they managed to convince people of the opposite. I mean, here they went for what? Uh, how how long was it? Was it three months that we went with no uh, no speaker? Uh, no, what that long? Three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm 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 out of it. Yeah. Uh, I'm always out of it. You'll have to get used to it. I mean, in some ways, it. it was longer than that because he was so ineffective at the end. Yeah, it was. Get, you know. Yeah, but, but I mean, three weeks without a speaker and showing you had the complete inability to find one, 
And when you had one, you couldn't stick with them. No, you had to get rid of them because of one person saying that we have to take a vote. And so everybody got rid of them. I mean, the Republicans just don't know what they're doing, and they're incompetent. Yeah. Right. And, and, they, and yet nobody, it, no, it, the Democrats are, I think, too nice to say they're incompetent. Yeah. And they, mm. they spent those three weeks doing that rather than working on the impending government shutdown yeah. that also threatens economic aid to and military aid to israel and ukraine mm -hmm. as well as our own government yep that's right i mean that's i mean it, they were on a six-week clock basically and they spent the first three weeks of it yeah working on something totally different yeah so now they're on a three-week clock Actually, it's less than that. Well, no, it's just Friday night. It's three weeks exactly. That. Look, we'll kick the can down the road again. Oh, sure. You know, another, another, another uh, 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 three week months or something like that. You well, know. we'll see. I mean, I don't know what their new homeboy will figure out. I don't know. I mean, he's. Well, he you know, isn't even used to leading. Right. You know, I mean, if you want to say something really bad about him, he's just not, not used to leading. He's never had to. Well, you know. He's, uh, yeah, and look, I mean, people can come from nowhere and be great uh, at that. Mm -hmm. But 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 his policy isn't gonna, you know. I don't care. I mean, you know, his policy is gonna be the problem. I mean, my understanding this morning, and I didn't realize this, was that he entered Congress uh, in an unopposed election. He ran unopposed. He won the primary in the district that he lived in, so yeah. he uh, he didn't even no one even ran against him. So, I mean, he's not even campaign battle tested. Mm -hmm. right. To win the Republican primary in the area he lived at the time that he did in 2015, that 2016 election, mm -hmm. all he had to do was make himself the most crazy Republican because it was the Trump ticket year, and he won. So he just went as far to the cuckoo as you could and got a lot. How long has this guy been in Congress? Since 2016. What? Seven years since 2016. Seven years. Okay. Came in with Trump. Yeah. Nice. You know, so, I mean, he's an election denier. Um, he was the leader of election overturning efforts. He was the leader of a lawsuit after that that went to the Supreme Court and lost mm -hmm. to overturn the 2020 election. I mean, he's a, he's a clown. Um, you know, he's a joke. He's anti-democratic. He's a fascist. I mean, a lot more. I mean... You know, uh, so I mean, I don't care if he's affable or anything. I mean, you know what I mean. I I'm sure think. if you go ask the right person, they would have been like Mussolini's great guy. You know, he's affable. I had dinner with him. Last <laughs> night. <He's great. laughs> Hitler's dog liked him. Right. I mean, what the fuck's that got to do with anything? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but Josh, do you, do you think because of because they were given the votes for a guy like that, that there's still a big Trump cloud well, hanging that, up that contingent, that contingent won, yeah, they, they got they got rewarded, they got exactly what they wanted. What does the Republican Party see is the great advantage to backing Trump. Yeah. I mean, it's like they're scared of him. Because of a Trump voter. I mean, is it because of the base? Well, you see, I can't believe that in the entire Republican Party, there weren't at least a handful of Republicans who said, this is all bad news here, you well, know? There are. We said for several weeks that it, they had the opportunity, and they absolutely shit on the opportunity. What was the opportunity you're talking about? To make a deal and, and come out with somebody halfway decent that would at least, you know, but the kind of there is de you know, there are decent you know, there are decent Republicans around, right. aren't and there? There are decent Republicans that could have made deals with the the Democrats and made uh, made the government actually work. But where but are those Republicans? Is my question. They're there. They just don't want to stand up and do anything. There's, there's no Republicans primary. with gonads. That's what you are need. they going to are they going to worry about having certain sanctions taken against them? What? I mean, well, I, how can well, eight well, of them make that much of a difference? Apparently well, they apparently can. they hijacked the entire party. Exactly. Yes, Ray. 
Well, I mean, look what happened to Liz Cheney and who was the other the Republican who spoke up? They got ousted and and Reykjavik, yeah, or Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe yeah, and they're yeah. gone and they're because they, they. That's what happens. That's what happens when the when, when the moderate Republicans attempt to. Uh, I can't believe saying I'm saying that Liz Cheney's a moderate Republican, but um, yeah. when when they speak up. No, they you get, know what she is. Ostracized. I'll tell you what she is. She's a very conservative Republican. Yeah. Yeah. But but as a true conservative, she be. doesn't believe in what the Republicans are doing because she finds it completely, you know, well, fascist. Has, fascist. Has, yeah. has, she has values. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Now you might disagree with those values, fair enough. Yeah. But she has them. You, I mean, that's to me, that's the difference. Yeah, she has but, a a a set of values and a worldview and a philosophy that she believes in for the reasons that she believes in it. But that's okay. And that is uh, the thing she believes in is democracies. Right. Well, well, you know, it, people it, it, speak, yeah. and then you accept what the people say. Yeah. Well, the, the, yeah, I'll sure. tell you, I'll tell you who was a, who was a very good Republican, a true conservative Republican, was John McCain. Yeah, yeah. and yet yeah, and. and you know, yet he stood up for all the right things, and he wouldn't stand up for all the the bull. You know. Well, he yeah. had and Trump he hated had, him. You know, he had yeah. values, right? Mm -hmm. He had served his country. He had lived yeah. a decent life by all accounts. Uh, he had a set of beliefs and a worldview, and he had values, some mm -hmm. of which we would have disagreed with, yeah, or, or mm -hmm. even rolled our eyes at. But yeah. the difference is, when we did, I would have never have tried to put him in jail for it, and he never would have tried to put you and I in jail for it. Right. I mean, that's the difference between democracy and fascism, and right? Fascism. I mean, you know. Yeah. yeah. Alan? That's yeah, McCain, as we know, stood up to Trump, told him I'm dying. When I'm, when I'm dead, I don't want you at my funeral. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, they, they weren't friends, you know, and... Trump said that he was never a war hero because he got caught. Yeah, he got caught. Yeah. Well, yeah, he said, "I like guys who didn't don't get caught." What a stupid statement! Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's incredibly, just, incredibly. I just that's just completely. Well, I kind of John like, McCain I, when he was flying by said, "Capture me, capture me." No, at one yeah. point I kind of made the same kind of comment when everybody was running for office, and they were always making a big thing about him uh, being you know, in the prisoner of war camp in uh, North Vietnam. And uh, I said, you know, I mean, it would have been better if he didn't get caught, something to that effect. But it wasn't exactly like I prefer people who don't get caught. But, you know, he only got famous because he did get caught. Because, it, in fact, that was the second time he had a plane go down. Mm. You know, it wasn't like he was exactly avoiding the risk. You know, he had one but, issue after another. He but, but what, he was boarding yeah. an aircraft on an aircraft carrier, yeah. and somebody accidentally tripped a missile on the deck of the aircraft carrier and sent the missile flying over towards him, and it exploded. He, <laughs> he had to crawl through the flames to get out. Uh, I forget the name of the ship. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, he he had a lot of bad things happen to him. But he, uh, you know, he did a good job, I think. Well, I think he was an honorable human being, mm -hmm. okay, in the end, I mean, in spite of what I ever said about him or whatever, because he was a Republican, he was running for several offices, he, and I didn't uh, agree with him. So I, I, I would do things to, to put him down. But I have to say that in the end, I came to really admire the man. I really admired his choice of Sarah Palin as the vice president uh, <laughs> candidate. That was... That was excellent. I think he said that was the biggest mistake he ever American made in life. his life. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it was they, they they felt they needed a woman. Yeah, I don't even candidate. think he vetted her himself. I had the feeling he did. He just went along with whatever somebody told him to do. Well, you know, I had I had a, um, a, a great epiphany once when uh, oh, what's his name uh, Jerry Brown, California, uh, was mm -hmm. on my show once and. He started putting some stuff down, and he was really going against stuff. And I said, "Gee, I wish you'd been this way when you were running for president, because you did the show when you were running for president, and you were just running the company line." 
And he says, that's what you got to do when you're running because that's what they tell you to say if mm -hmm. you want to win. And I believe them. He said, but I don't stand by any of this stuff I said when I was running for president. Yeah. And, and so I learned that, that, you know, that people have a tendency to be liars when they're running for political office. Yeah. And I, uh, uh, you know, but I mean, I, and I have a lot of respect for Jerry Brown. Uh, but, you know, it, it was uh, a real problem with John, John McCain. Uh, because he had to somehow listen to these jerks who were telling him, "You want to win? Well, here's a guy. What you got to do to win? You got here. We got this woman, Sarah Palin. She's the governor of. She was the governor of Alaska. She's yeah. good looking, and uh, she'll she'll offset your curmudgeonliness or something like that. You know. So I think he went along with it for that reason. He was listening to his political operatives. But you know. I'm surprised Dan Quayle and Sarah Palin don't run. Two idiots. <laughs> uh, they don't have. They don't have any cachet anymore. Okay, mm -hmm. you know. They they just, yeah. Well, after the potato you, incident, that's that was kind of it. Got them yeah. electronic. Ray, remember the kid? And this might have been my generation. Remember the? Uh, my mother bought it for me. It was the electronic spelling thing. It was like a little electronic thing. You used to put the words in. Yeah. And they. Valid. He should have got one of those quail. You know he didn't get one of those. You know he didn't have one of those. No. <laughs> he didn't need it. <laughs> well, how do we spell potato? Uh, no e. No e. He put the e at the end. That was the end of his political career. Yeah, he went to South America and he said, "I wish I took more." Um, uh, 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 not Spanish, but uh, English. <laughs> now, <laughs> oh, God darn! It was on the tip of my tongue. Now I can't say. Well, well, I'll tell you what was. I'll tell you what, though. I mean, you could put them down for that. But it, it, a lot of times we might spell that that wrong too. You know. Well, that's I mean, why the whole thing's ridiculous. I mean, Trump but, can do anything he wants and, and still gain popularity. Someone puts an e at the end of potato and they're done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. It exactly. was just like who was the guy who went whoop whoop whoop. I forgot. Um, how can be, was it, how can be no, that was a Democratic guy. Oh, that yeah. was the guy. Who went, we're going to go to uh, what? And he went, Woo! Don't ask yeah, me. Yeah, that was the end. Don't, ask, was the end. don't was ask me for names. I'll tell you what happened with him, though. He went crazy. I'll remember his name in a minute. Oh, Dean. 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 Howard Dean. John Dean. John, John Howard Dean. Dean. John. Howard Dean. Howard John Dean, Dean is the. John Dean. Yeah, Howard Dean. 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 But, but the problem with Dean Howard Dean was, I'll tell you what was, because I know about audio, okay? Uh, uh, I learned this a long time ago when I did comedy shows and I did them on radio. And what I had the uh, engineers do was literally make sure we had enough microphones pointed at the audience. Bundy. So oh. that... that Howard. Bundy. Uh, I, 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 turn that off there, Charlene. Yeah. Sorry. You got... You got I give you another... 30 seconds and then I'm going to call you Jeff. <laughs> okay, there we go. What I did was... Well, no cigar. Yeah, yeah no kidding. <laughs> what was I going to say? Um, wait a minute, what was I going to say? Oh, there, with the microphones, with the crowd? Oh, microphones, yeah. yeah. Point, I had them point the microphones at the crowd because I noticed when I listened to one of the shows we did, one of the first ones we did, that the... Uh, if if the, you couldn't hear the audience laughing, then this person would be telling jokes and they wouldn't seem funny because nobody was laughing, obviously. So I had them point them at the audience so that they could hear them. And uh, uh, that was uh, the day I had that epiphany that you, you have to have the audience be, be jacked up so, so it comes out equal to the voice of the comedian. Well, what happened with John Dean was when he got out there and he started going, well, we're going to go to Maine and we're going to go to blah, 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 Yahoo, blah, blah. Well, there were people in the audience going, yeah, yeah. They were responding to it, but you couldn't hear them. Right. And so, therefore, he looked like an idiot. And that cost him the nomination. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so to anybody who's ever going to do something like that, make sure you, you, you mic the audience, Okay. 
because there's and no... who and who was the guy who who had the photo of him with his girlfriend on the monkey business oh, boat? Oh, well, that that was oh god. You know, you're oh, asking yeah. me for names tonight, and I'm completely out of it. I don't remember his name either. Well, uh, yeah, but that was another one. But just isn't it picture. amazing that you can remember the name of the of the boat? Yeah, yeah. monkey business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, because it was so ironic. He was, you know, he was in. He was. He was. Monkey do you, do you, remember, <laughs> yeah. you remember that? Was, do you remember who that was, Josh? Who's that? The guy on the monkey business with his girlfriend that he got caught. I can even see his face. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah like the red hair and. Yeah. and uh, what the hell is that guy's that name? Was, that was going back a long way though already. Yeah, mid eighties. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to remember who the guy was who Not was. Gary with, Hart was it? Uh, Gary Hart. Very yeah, good. Hard. And yeah. Donna yeah. Rice. Donna yeah. Rice was yeah, the girl. In the papers. Yeah. Was Donna, Donna Rice was good. Think who was yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Tony you gets the... Tony, Tony looked it up on the internet. Tony, 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 Tony becomes together. valuable on this show once a year. <laughs> yeah, listening to you yeah. all the other. Like, he Googled <laughs> it. Listen again. Uh, <laughs> but then there was also the guy. Who was the, uh, who, was the guy who jumped into his girlfriend or this hooker he was with? Jumped Holy into the into the uh, water in Washington D.C. Remember uh, that Kennedy? <laughs> no. No. Oh no. No, no. That that was the one that drowned in the water. Oh, I'm the car crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. The one that to get away from the press or whoever. Every Joe Kopechny. No, that that was that was, uh, that was the, the one who drowned. drowned. That's the case. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll never get over that one. That's uh, hard. Uh, <laughs> who was that other one? I'll, wait, I'm trying to think. Uh, do you know who I'm talking about? Joey though? Buttafuoco's girlfriend. No, no, oh, no, no. no. <laughs> I'll take Amy Joe Bishop and set a square out. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Hold on. Yeah. Mm. Well, that so was a good one too. Yeah, it's like you couldn't make this up. Like you would think it was made up. Like how? How do they do these things? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, if you're in politics, you should know that you're being watched. I mean, Alex, you were yeah. watching entertainment. Wouldn't you be afraid to go out with somebody? Well, you would... see, no, not at all. And I'll tell you why. Because huh? I built a reputation for myself where when it happened, nobody doubted it for a second. You right, know? right. I mean, oh. I could be caught I could be caught with a hooker, and they go, oh, well, that's Alex <laughs> Bennett, you know. Oh, Listen to him on the radio, <laughs> you, you, you know. Hookers. Hookers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, so I said I actually created for myself a, uh, a, a problem proof character on the radio. Because if I did that character, you know, if I did something wrong, nobody would uh, put it, hold it against me. They'd say, oh, that's true. That's true. That's what Trump does. That's exactly what he does. You yeah. know, that's kind of what he does. He could grab him by the pussy. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, what other now person. He's just been demonetized. What? He said he could shoot somebody in Times Square and get away with it. And he's right. True, actually. And he's absolutely right. He was absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, dead on there. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, so. They don't even care if he turned over our nuclear secrets to the Russians. Yeah. Right. He already right. did. Remember well, when my pillow guy left oh, the that's White right, House he did. with all those papers? Remember he left with all those papers? Yeah. yeah. Oh, look! Look who grew a, 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 look, look grew a pair of hands. <laughs> uh, that's what's that's what call what's called being loved by a daughter. Something that you haven't had to deal with till recently. Is yeah. she, has she been back there all along? Yeah, but she has her headphones on usually. Okay. Well, she had her headphones on then. Now. Yeah. But, yeah. So, I'll... can I have it? Yes. Bye. Where, where, where? Oh, she's going He's... back to her earphones. Okay. That's okay. Oh, there she goes. She's leaving. He always throws her out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want people not to talk because they because she's in here. She shouldn't be in here. So. Well. Okay. Well, you don't say anything that terrible. Most of them. What are you doing? Everybody, the, everybody, what are you doing that background? Yeah. What, what are you doing that background for? He's not in that part of the house anymore. I know, but somebody has to be. Oh, okay. <laughs> they we rented the apartment out. They ripped the wallpaper down. Is they the did. Paper gone. Is that even there yes, they did. Yeah. And, well, and I'm glad curtain. I saved this for posterity. Yeah. And the you send me an image. I have. I actually sent some. Uh, I'll send it to you. Thanks, Rick. I actually ripped some down. 
I got to send some to Alex. I got some. <laughs> 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 I'll send you some, Alex. They, they actually, they would. Uh, I mean, to sidetrack the show, but the lay, the girl and the husband set up the hey, Tony. Do you mind if we uh, take the wallpaper down? I says no. I'm not. There we go. There goes the wallpaper. There wow. goes the, I took a scrap on some swatches. Oh, let's Bones see here. Let's, let's see. Oh, here. You, Wait a minute. You ruined the history. Hmm. I, I, I think, the history I think they're putting up wallpaper though, Ray. When I last looked, it looked like different wallpaper though, Alex. Mm -hmm. I had, like, All right, Brian. So I heard the working. Oh, I don't have I the know, wallpaper but, here I, anymore. Uh, I was looking Brian to see if Brian joined the club. Yeah. yeah. I was looking to see if I had the wallpaper, but I Maybe don't. My hair looks weird. It like, moves around. Alan? That was mom. I took those plates down. I guess the wall came from my head. Look, we're all at the same house. We're all happy. I don't have mine, so I can't do it. The, the funny mm -hmm. thing is, we're all about 10 or 15 miles separation, the three of us. Yeah. It's just a big house. Away. Big house. There you go. Yeah. 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 Well, whatever. Okay. So okay. Uh, let me see here. Was all the right. guy you're talking about, Alex, was that guy Wilbur Mills? Wilbur Mills. Oh, yeah. Uh, Fox. Fox. Fanny Fox. That was in the Fanny Fox. Yeah, that was in the chat room. The guy. Uh, uh, Fanny Fox. Fox. Fanny Fox. Yep. Wow. Where, where was that? In our our uh, uh, chat room. Our yeah. chat room. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. See? Oh, yeah. Great. Gary Hart. And then they yeah. said You're Wilbur right. Mills. And it yeah. was Fanny Fox. Fanny Fox died in 2001. And Fanny Fox, it looks here, was Fox was spelled with an E. Really? And I Fanny I think was, so. I think I remember that, yeah. It was with an E, too. So he, she, she would have done okay better with, uh, what's his name, who spelled potato wrong. <laughs> yeah. Hey, spell it? I don't think so. But, um, you know, I mean, um, boy, how many Tony backgrounds do we have here? Three. Yeah. Of them, My mother lives on. I'm going to take some a piece of the cemetery and put it in a plant. You're going to put it on the tombstone, are you? I actually have a little plant I took there. You know, we planted it, let you plant. I'm going to take a cut of the swatch and put it on the thing and put rocks on. Well, I put rocks on the one I go for. Uh, what, like. Really? Yeah. 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 I got. I haven't been here in two weeks, so I got to make my track there when I go to the food store. Really? Yeah, I, I, because it's right along the way. So me and my sister just pop in and then drive out. You know, the last time I've been at my mother's, you know, the last time I've been at my mother's grave? I'm afraid to ask. The day of her funeral. Oh, mm -hmm. Alex. Yeah, and I still time. have yet to put up a tombstone. Oh, oh that's, is that true? You really never did? I yeah, just that. haven't had the time. Oh, man, that's bad. Dude. I'm a, that's not nice. Come on. You know Tony, you're, Tony, you're not doing anything. Why don't you offer to do it for him? Oh man, that's the, the well, kind of you know, I, I was thinking about doing. I'm coming into some money soon, and I was thinking about doing it. And um, uh, I was thinking about, uh, but then, you know, I can't even remember where it is. Well, they probably you'd have to go to the. Well, I think my business go to manager. The, knows. They can tell you. Yeah. yeah. They keep a record. Yeah. Find a grave. There's a site. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah but I, you don't have to do that. You can just go to the go to the go to the. Um, cemetery, well, and they'll well, tell you where. Well, my she father's is. grave is right next to hers. Oh, so then you're right there. To so, so well, you know what I was thinking of doing is tearing down his stone, which I always thought was bigger, but it's not bigger. It's not very big, and mm -hmm. just tear it down and put one huge one stone for both. Stone yeah. for both. That, you know, you and I told you what I'm going to put on. I've mentioned this before. Oh, you say it again. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna yeah, I, I, on my on my on that one tombstone, I thought of uh, putting. Uh, 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 you know, in nice letters, uh, Alex and um, what's my mother's name? Ruth Schwarzman. Yeah, right? And then parents of, and in big letters, Alex Bennett. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You should get a little, like a stone of you, like a picture of yourself, like they do, like the entertainers have. Yeah, have, have you seen, movies. have you ever, have you been to the Russian segment of any cemetery these days? And seeing what they're putting up for tombstones. When they had, when I went to see his. Well, forget about okay. Houdini. I'm not talking about Houdini. Oh. <laughs> I'm talking about they got these like, just photographic faces on the tombstone. Oh yes. yes oh I'm, yeah. But is how do they do that? I don't. I, well, they obviously take a photograph and yeah, figure out a, a way to etch it into the it. tombstone. But I mean, why? I mean, it's just so so. It's What's ghoulish, it? actually. They walk by my mom's room. There's one right next to it. I'm like, oh my god, me and my brother. It is ghoulish. ghoulish. It looks it's, ghoulish. It's, it's ghoulish. 
Yeah. And, and it's yeah. always a picture of when they were like 30 years old. Yeah. Yeah, Ray, I went right by my mom's spot. There's a young guy there. And Fernandez, I forgot his first name. I said, oh my God. I said, I never seen that before. And it just looks so wrong. Like, you know, I don't know. I don't want to say it, but I every like, time I go by it. What are, you, what are you saying, Charlene? It's very expensive to do it. I like it. I think it's nice. You think just, it's nice? <laughs> I, I went out when we buried uh, Jack Garfine. I went on, we went out to the cemetery and we were getting lost. We didn't know exactly where we were. And we went past all these tombstones like that. And I went, boy, that is morbid. Yeah, I didn't like it. I was turned off by it. I, 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 it, not, it didn't look like they were resting a piece. Like, I mean, I think I always kind of minded a little bit when they put a photograph on yeah. the tombstone. Can I ask you, where did they bury Jack Garfine? Because I yeah. love him. Great director. Well, yeah, but I mean, uh, uh, where do they? I don't know. It's out in Queens somewhere. Oh, right. really? Not in yeah, St. John's? Is no? I think he he's Jew. He was Jewish. I bet you he might be in the Houdini one. Nah, that's an old one. That one. The in Hulu, Hollywood. <laughs> well, who? Where was? Well, Houdini. I think was probably buried in some place like Brooklyn or. Oh uh, no! Actually, Houdini's in uh, Woodside, Queens. Oh really? Right where I go okay. Back. Yeah. Right. right. Yep. And his whole family is. You as soon as you go in, it's in the old part of the. Uh, Jewish cemetery. Then you go down into the newer part. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know who's buried near my mom, Alex? I told this to Charlene. The couple of feet, like maybe two minutes away, Maplethorpe. Maplethorpe. Uh, oh, yep. Okay. He's with his mom, and the plot is so small you wouldn't even know like it was somebody famous. And there's a big picture of a big penis on on his. Yeah, um, actually, his right. stuff. it's so plain. If you didn't know who he was, it's mom. just plain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pointing right at her. It's anyway, like erect. Anyway, um, you you, I, 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 again no. tonight I'm watching the news. Okay, and they're doing this thing about the the killings in Maine, and again mm -hmm. they're interviewing people. And they won't be interviewing I, the killer. I know, but they were then they had this woman who they were interviewing, and she started going into tears. And I said, "Watch this, Marjorie." Close up. And I kept saying. To the, to the, to the screen. Okay, let's move the camera in a little closer. Let's move it in a little closer. Don't <laughs> cut until I tell you to cut. A little closer. Keep going. Let's see those tears. And I, they, I was absolutely calling the shot, because yeah. they were just, just absolutely belaboring the fact that this person was crying, and I think that is so horrible. I think it is so terrible. You want to talk about bad taste? That's the epitome of bad taste. And they call it news reporting. Uh -huh. you know. So I don't know. We live in terrible times, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, oh, oh, yeah, today. This, this was the best part. Uh, we're, we're taking, what do they, what do they call it? What did Israel call it? We're taking uh, uh, retribution or whatever. You know, and I said, the idea isn't to have retribution. The idea is to have justice. Yeah. You know, yep. the idea is to be a little more reserved in your response uh, well, so as to not kill innocent people. Do you know that there have been, in Gaza, so far, seven over 7,000 um uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Gazans killed, Palestinians killed, mm -hmm. and I find that disgusting. And you say, "Well, look at what happened in Israel. Only twelve hundred. I'm saying only twelve hundred because now we're talking seven thousand. It's sickening. You know. Now, I mean, any amount of people dead is wrong, but the retribution is against innocent people to the tune of seven thousand souls." Yeah, the, the news that I see only confirms three of the people that are dead were Hamas members. That's sad. Really? Yep. Yeah, I they, saw 13, but still, oh, I mean, that, did, did they think they were yeah, going to get any more? What they were doing is they were going after uh, the um, um, Hamas tunnels, which are buried conveniently and terribly so under... Mm -hmm hospitals yeah okay disgusting now they go elsewhere too but to only so they, they bomb the hell out of these hotel, hospitals 
and all they got, all they killed was maybe thirteen Hamas members. Yeah, and they think the Hamas people are going to be sitting under there, knowing they're going to bomb the. I mean, it's so stupid. Yeah, of course. Are, why didn't they like stop for a minute before they start bombing? Figure out the most precise way of getting these guys, and do do it that way instead of because it's revenge. It's just revenge. I, I it's just it's just getting way. even, and it's so you know revenge yeah. is a very easy impulse to give into. Yeah, very but easy to, one. We did the same. Oh. We yeah. talked about it last night, Ray. Surgical mm -hmm. strikes, like yeah, like we did with the Navy SEALs. Yeah, I was listening yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, you see, so, surgical yeah. strikes uh, would mean they would <laughs> actually have to go in there with human beings, find Absolutely. those tunnels, and start wiping those people out. Absolutely. But they also say we want to get the hostages back. Well, I'm telling you, they haven't done anything to get the hostages back. Well, I'm sure I mean, there's Mike, a lot of dead hostages. I'm wondering how many dead yep. hostages there are because of these bombings. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, I mean, what you're doing is you're, you're. It just isn't the right. It isn't the right approach. What do you think, Josh? Josh, I I always go to Josh for, yeah, to make me. I think that the people of Gaza and the Palestinians have chosen Hamas to be their leaders and their representatives and their government for a very long time and I think that they are fully aware of what they stood for and what they still stand for mm -hmm. and I think they have supported them even knowing that and I think the vast majority of them still support them and if given the opportunity they burn the American flag and swear against Americans anytime they get the opportunity so I am not for the indiscriminate killing of civilians, but I believe that they chose did their they, government. Did, did they really choose? That, did that they re the last them? elections were in 2007. That's that's when they chose them in 2007, and they hadn't, and they suppressed all the elections yeah, since the then. Yeah, the Hamas won't let and them they have get the nothing to get rid of them. Well, how were they going to get rid of them? How they had get rid of them. Hmm. The court, a, 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 according according like to what? they like seem, they seem perfectly capable of making violence against Israelis. They, they no no those Hamas, Hamas making violence. That's not the people that are getting killed in these airstrikes. That's Hamas making violence, I think. Right? And I would say, uh, and and you can Part correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, but I think a great deal of the support for Hamas in Gaza was really strong armed on them. I, you know, well, I think I would disagree. Okay. But everything and I've read said it was. What was that wrong? It happened. I'm, I'm serious, Josh. Killed. Like where are you get? They weren't even born in 2007. Uh, listen, if so they the, didn't choose if, anybody. If the people of Gaza. Uh, I, I'm just telling you that if you have this conception that the people of Gaza just love the Israelis and want to live in peace and harmony. No. Nobody said. Well, let, nobody me, let, me this, let, let, me, let me let me ask you this, Josh. Let me let me ask you this, Josh. When Israelis are dropping bombs on your country, where you live, are you supposed to like them? No. I think the Israelis... Where, where's the incentive to like them? I mean, I don't think the Israelis have dropped bombs on Gaza because they woke up in the morning and said, we'd really like to kill some Palestinians today. No, no. They've always done so as a result of an action that was taken. Well, you know, it, 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 how much of that is an excuse to get get Hamas? I mean, I think they should get Hamas. I think Hamas is terrible. Sure. There's no question about it. They, I'm never, not going to sit here and defend Hamas for one second. What? But I do think a lot of innocent people are being killed, a lot of children, a lot I of old people. They probably are. You know, and Netanyahu has been looking for an excuse I, to expand. I think that there is no large-scale military conflict that has ever taken place where that was not the case. Mm -hmm. I think the country that we live in now killed more innocent Germans and more innocent Japanese, if that's what you want to call them, than they did military personnel in some cases. They killed hundreds of thousands Japanese. of civilians mm -hmm. with indiscriminate nighttime bombing raids because that was the choice that they had to do. And two I nuclear think weapons. That, I think that William Tecumseh Sherman destroyed the South and starved it and took away its ability to make war. And I think the Israeli perspective is that they are going to take away, finally, once and for all, the, the Palestinian 
and their leadership ways of waging war. Yeah, that that's true. Is, that is a long time. Do you think they're military it, doctor? Do you think do you think they're doing that though? When we find that uh, only a handful of Hamas have been killed in all of this, what do we? What, what's the answer here? I mean, I I think that's their plan. Their plan is to remove their ability to wage war and to remove from the people their spirit to want to wage war. Most wars have been ended when the opposite side is successful in making it so costly for one side to continue to wage war that they stop. Or well, what's the old that they annihilate and the, the well, problem yeah. is that, that, that Hamas has had since 2007 to embed themselves amongst the, the, the Palestinian people. So that cancer has grown within the people. And there's no other way to go in there, and 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 yeah. rid that cancer. And and I don't I don't know mm -hmm. of any hospitals that have been bombed. Just mm -hmm. oh, there's a Hamas guy in the basement. Let's bomb the hospital. I mean, I think those comments that you guys make there are a little bit exaggerated. No, but the they they, that they, I had to, of they had to they had to bomb. They had been to, proven they, it, to have not come from the Israelis, but no, was in fact bombed by the. By, no, wait a the second. There have rockets. But wait a second. There have been at least a dozen medical facilities that have been bombed. Nah. Yes, there has. No. I've been reading. I, I haven't heard of a. I haven't heard. Okay, of we'll look it up. It's I mean, there. If they have, and even if no, they oh, have, no, that's wrong. I'm sorry. I su I support Josh. I, I support no, but that's not Josh. true. What you just said. I'm I sorry. I support what Josh is saying too. Okay, but. Yeah. I, I'm just telling you, there was more than one medical facility well, bombed. One of them, the one that those killed were casualties of war, though. If there was a hundred, what? I mean, but you just said there was change? one. I, I just, just told you, you that the plan was for them to eliminate the ability of their enemy to wage war. No. Okay, next time somebody robs a bank and they're trapped in there with a bunch of uh, hostages, we just should go in there and shoot everybody, and that'll discourage all the bank robbers. It's not the equivalent of World War II. Two. Equivalence, personally, I, I'm 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 speaking to what the Israeli doctrine and strategy is looking to be. I, I make it right. That, that that's well, you know, I I honestly believe that if I if I thought this was a solution to the problem, but you know, what do you, what do you want? You'd like to get the you'd like to get those hostages back. If you keep up with this, there's not a chance you're going to get those hostages you know, back I, alive. I don't, I don't there's think not much be, of a chance anyhow. Yeah, I, what I, you, I personally, I mean, and I, I don't mean to sound indifferent toward him, but for the long term, they that's not something they can worry about. Right. I mean, I'm just telling you, if if, if well, they've often said, the you know, you never you, you, you never give in. Yeah. Blood English citizens held hostage in 1940. Do you think Churchill would have said, well, I, I don't know. Well, it and, be. and part of the reason that there are hostages in the first place is because the IDF did not take care of the border. And that that's a known fact as well. They yeah. did not take care of the border. There was there was there were flaws in what happened in that raid. Mm -hmm. They came over. They they had they had signs ahead of time. That supposedly that hadn't happen. Egypt they told Net ignored. hadn't Egypt told Netanyahu this was coming. Yeah, and they ignored yeah. those signs, and, 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 and like so it's half their fault for that happening. I love it. Netanyahu's also been looking for an excuse to expand for quite a while. Yeah, for a long. Well, this is his excuse. So, so the, you know, there's the biggest hospital explosion that killed the most was a Hamas a missile that misfired and exploded and killed. It actually, like, wasn't Hamas. It was some other. Radical. That's true. That's true. And exploded in the parking like, lot and Israel, caught all the cars. Israel has said fault that they are both targeting sides. hospitals. Look, it's, on both it, sides listen. And it's let's, let's, a war, let's, and war is ugly. Let's talk. Absolutely. Let's talk for just a quick second about the fog of war. You hmm. know, and that whatever happened at that hospital, who knows who did it? You know, the the uh, Israelis. They have satellite That's proof. True. Who did it? They do have satellite proof now. Yeah, they, they have satellite proof that the missile was launched and went in the wrong direction. Instead of continuing to go up, went sideways and hit yeah. the hospital. But this wasn't right. Hamas, was it? It was another group. No, it was the other the other one to the north. <clears throat> Not Hezbollah. Or Hezbollah. Was that Hezbollah? I don't think it was Hezbollah. No, it was some I, other radical. You know, yeah. there are a lot of other little radical groups who maybe have one missile among them. 
That's why it's hard mm. to compare this to World War II because you were fighting against the state. Here you have uh, terrorist groups who can move around and go to other yeah. countries mm. and hide away somewhere else and reemerge somewhere else. Well, so in any war, you're not fighting against the state; you're fighting against people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you, you know what I mean. I mean, no, they're I'm, implements no, of the I state. Don't, because I'm telling you that the architects of the strategy of World War II said, I understand what you're saying, but they're going to say the government bought a bomb and they dropped it and they killed some of our troops. Well, who made the bomb? People in a factory. Destroy mm -hmm. the factory, kill the people. Then they'll fix the factory up and they'll get some more people. And okay, then we should the be bombing again, Iran. And we'll kill more of the people. I mean, I'm I'm not advocating for putting people in a meat grinder, but I'm saying that the argument was made and accepted and agreed upon by Allied powers that said, if we have to kill 500,000 to save 5 million or 500 million, that's what we're going to, you know, that was the decision that they made. Mm -hmm. And we now accept that because it was us and because we believe that it was right. I'm, I'm saying look at it from an Israeli perspective. I've looked at uh, it from I don't a Palestinian right. perspective. Listen, I've never been a friend of the Israelis. I think they do tend to overreact. But, uh, I mean, yeah. I'm saying that they're probably getting a little sick and tired. You know, and if they think they've reached their limit, then they've reached their limit. So, well, look, I, don't I, know. I just, I'm, I'm just, I just know I, that the notion that there are people living in Gaza that, that, ju that, just, that just hate Hamas... And they just can't believe they never lifted a finger to try to do. Yeah, but they are they are living about. in a they are living again in a capsule where they are getting nothing but Hamas propaganda. OK, and their minds are being told that the enemy is Israel and so on over and over and over again. And I'm sure they looked at them like the police. They probably figured they were protecting them. Exactly. So, I mean, you know, the fact is the people lie to their people. And that's what causes wars. But, and that's what causes conflict. But, what? Yeah, you? but they were believing that, so they have to understand. Yeah, yeah. What happens? And do we? And do the Israelis believe everything Netanyahu tells them? No. But Most how about in this is. situation? Some people do. Well, yeah. There are a lot of Israelis who are not in favor of what's going on. I just talked to a friend of mine there. Uh, on my podcast he's, that happens he's, that happens in any war right right, right. i'm just saying it's not well the there are a lot of people that are not satisfied with netanyahu and the way he handled this thing and the fact that it, it's come out that things, yeah. that egypt told him that this attack was imminent and yeah. he did nothing about it okay he right. let it happen and he may have let it happen for his own well-being because he was being assailed by everybody else in the country for him trying to take down the supreme court and so the if there was a, 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 a nothing nothing can save your ass better than a war going on at some time to you know take the heat off of you and put the heat on somebody <clears throat> else so i don't trust netanyahu completely either uh you know but that and and, and yes no i can't be anti-semitic folks i'm a jew for crying out loud and i'm proud to be one hey yeah. muslims are semites too they yeah. are semites absolutely we're all did brothers. Talk That's... About the, huh? I didn't know if you guys, I, I know we're at the end of the show, but did you guys even talk about the new uh, candidate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. What? I was late, so my bad. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Presidential candidate? Yeah. Which oh, one? I didn't know about Which one? Democratic missed. president. Oh, oh yeah, candidate. there is a, uh, I forget his name now. Oh, really? So will everybody oh, else, I guess. Name. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's like, so. anyway uh, listen, we got to go. There's the theme. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you very much, Josh. Thank you, Charlie. Chank. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Ray. Thank you to uh, Kevin. Thank you to uh, uh, Tony. And, of course, to Charlene. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. And uh, here I go. There we go. There you go. I, I had to get my hand up over my microphone. Nah, anyway, I thank everybody for joining us tonight. I hope they'll join us again uh, next week. Uh, we'll be back again on Monday with the pop-up show. It'll be there on uh, Facebook. And then again uh, next week, right here, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, that's on Wednesday, by the way. <laughs> in the meantime... 
Uh, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.